Greetings, everybody. I figured I better jump on here before the end of um, April because this is supposed to be my root chakra month. And I haven't jumped on because I've just been too tired. <laughs> I've been resting. <laughs> okay. It's been a very intense month of activations and downloads and uploads and a lot of energy um, in general just floating around in our um, environment and atmosphere. So today I wanted to talk about essential oils um, in the root chakra and the role they play and how you can use them to kind of heal some of the energy of the root chakra and get it cleared because we find our root chakra blocked a lot of times. And I can use a prime example. Um, today I made a post and um, I think sometimes when we see posts on social media, if it doesn't jive with our beliefs or how we feel, then we tend to want to attack people for how they feel or what they believe. And social media is tricky like that because we fall for it every time. Um, I even do it myself or have done it. So I know that this is not something that is just... um. It's not something you can just blame yourself for. We all do it or have done it. And that's the thing. When when we fall into our heart space, I think that we don't react the same way um, towards people who may have different beliefs or feelings or ideas or, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if someone, like you really have to, to me, you have to start paying attention to how you feel inside. When someone makes a post, right, and you don't agree with it, Kind of let it sit with you for a minute and see how it makes you feel. Because a lot of times you'll notice your stomach will start to get tight. You'll start, um, you know, making a response to them verbally in your mind, kind of like. <laughs> and then it'll just come out in the post and you'll say something that's very um, hurtful or antagonistic. And it's nothing that you would ever say standing in nobody's face. So Facebook is definitely a place for punks <laughs> sometimes because this is not something it's a, it's a platform where you can speak how you feel, but you would probably never say these things in the person's face if you saw them. So we have to be mindful of that and really take a deep breath sometimes and just fall into your heart space and approach everything with love and light. It's not hard. It's quite easy because otherwise you hold on to it and then you start to try to get advocates to agree with you so that they can also attack the person as well. And I see it happen all the time. It happens to me a lot. That's why I try not to post things that would agitate people. But sometimes people need to be agitated so that their mind can wake up a little bit and they can start thinking. Um, so anyway, let's get into the essential oils. Um our root, we're talking about the root chakra today. I'm in my bedroom because my children are on my computers and they are distance learning. So I'm in my bedroom <laughs> and we're going to talk about the root chakra today. Okay. And essential oils. So the first one I want to talk about is black pepper. Now, when we think of black pepper, of course, we think about, you know, the pepper that we put on our food. And, but when you really think about it, black pepper is something that makes you sneeze, right? So you, you're sneezing to get something off your chest or out of you, right? So a little bit about, they call it the oil of unmasking because a lot of times we walk it around with um, certain emotions or feelings within us that are not necessarily true to how we really feel. And we tend to, um, we repress those emotions and then we start to feel kind of trapped and then we'll have these angry outbursts, you know, at certain times. So I'm just going to read a little bit about it. Um, black pepper um, reveals the mass and facades used to hide aspects of ourselves. Since childhood, most individuals have been taught that some feelings and behaviors are good while others are not. Right. So instead of seeking to understand seemingly inappropriate feelings and behaviors, they usually judge, condemn and repress them. Individuals learn early on that to be loved and accepted, they must hide undesirable aspects of themselves behind a mask or a facade. 
I did it for years, so I know that this is true. Um, until I started really going into myself and learning how to express myself, um, my true self, and not allowing others' opinions to affect me. So Black Pepper invites individuals to get real by digging deep within the less understood parts of the self, whether one's true motives and feelings are acknowledged or not, they continue to exist. The more these feelings are pushed down, buried, and repressed, the more they seek to make themselves known. If they are not honestly dealt with and acknowledged, they will often be expressed through erratic, compulsive, and addictive behaviors. Black Pepper also reignites the soul fire, fueling motivation, high energy, and hastening the healing process. It gives an individual strength to overcome the challenges and issues they carry inside and invites them to live in integrity within the self. So it addresses those emotions of emotional dishonesty, um, repressed emotions, feeling trapped, prideful, superficial, and judgmental. So black pepper is definitely one to put down on your list of um, essential oils to use. Um, there's another one that I didn't talk about. That That's one that I didn't talk about, but there's another one that I didn't talk about in my slide presentation on the root chakra, and that's cardamom, and they call that the oil of objectivity. Cardamom helps individuals to regain objectivity and mental sobriety and self-control. Um, cardamom especially is helpful for times when one's anger goes to their head, causing them to become hot-headed. Um, anger is definitely one of those, um, energies that blocks the root chakra. So it's not saying you can't get angry, but when you lose control in that anger and start attacking others, that's the problem. Okay. So it helps to bring balance, mental clarity, and objectivity during my moments of extreme anger and frustration. So you'll see me looking down because I'm reading from my, um, emotional emotions and essential oils book here. And I'm going to post the link to this in my um, description when I'm done. Okay. Um, it's cardamom is especially beneficial for individuals with a long history of anger or aggression, um, which often becomes directed outward, which we know, right? Um, it helps individuals to let go of emotional distortions um, which cause them to objectify other people and see them as inconveniences. We need that right now more than ever. Social media is a platform that will make you see other people's opinions or people as inconveniences to your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, right? So it addresses the emotions um, of being easily frustrated, objectifying others, blaming other people, and just overall being unable to think clearly about you know, whatever it is that's bugging you. So I'm going to also post the name of these oils down in the description as well when I'm done. Because I'm going to go a little fast because I don't want to take up all your time today. I just wanted to jump on. So also another um, blocked root chakra syndrome symptom is um, sexual issues um, in our reproductive systems. Um, cinnamon is the oil of sexual harmony. Um, it heals sexual issues such as repression, trauma, or abuse, like being raped or um, aggressive sex energy. Um, it dispels fears of rejection, of jealousy, of control, and pride. So, you know, cinnamon, I don't know, it's something, it was a gum, one of those chewing gums I used to chew all the time. It was cinnamon. So I always had a kind of healthy sex drive, <laughs> I assume because of it. Um, I probably need to start chewing that gum again. Mm. Um, it also nurtures your health, a healthy sexuality. It, um, nurtures strong relationships that are based on mutual love and respect. And it kind of wipes out pretenses and facades that we might have, um, in our lives. And it lets, it encourages the soul to let go of control and allow others to be free. Um, a lot of times we try to trap people by our thoughts, emotions, feelings, and beliefs, and that ain't going to work. We got to let people be who they are at all times, even the ones that annoy us the most. And you know that that is true because a lot of people do that. <laughs> um, 
So the next oil I want to speak about is juniper. Let me find that. Juniper assists us in facing our fears. That's the oil of the night. Um, juniper is like the little red berries on the bush. It's like on a little tree. And um, they assist us. Okay, so fear. Fear and um, anxiety. You know, those are also emotions that block the root chakra. So juniper berry addresses that. And as a child, I used to be afraid of the dark. Um, there was nothing there but me, but I used to be afraid of it so much to the point where I would be paralyzed in fear. I would literally lay in, like, I'm talking about really young, like before three years old, I would lay in the bed and pee on myself before I go to the bathroom because I was so afraid of the dark. Not to mention, I had a galactic visitor when I was three years old and didn't realize what it was. Something crawled, you know, came stepping into the window and we were up three stories high. I don't know how they got in the window. So I would see through the veil a lot when I was a kid. So um, I feared that as opposed to embracing it. Um, so Juniper Berry is known as the oil of night. Um, it assists those who fear the dark or unknown aspects of themselves. Right? Like people are afraid of aliens. <laughs> That's an unknown aspect of yourself. You are them. So stop fearing something that is you. Um, it also helps individuals to understand that those things that they fear are intended to be their teachers. Instead of hiding from what they do not understand, Juniper Berry encourages individuals to learn the lesson and face their fear. These fears often live within the unexplored areas of self. Juniper Berry acts as a catalyst by helping individuals access and address those fears and issues which have long been avoided, right? So I think that's that speaks to um, facing your fears and facing the enemy within yourself, which is unexplored because quite often times when you fear something, you're fearing just the aspect of yourself. It's something that's already within you that you need to clear out. We have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Right? So, um, Juniper Berry assists with that. It helps re reconcile and restore the balance between light and dark consciousness, um, and your subconscious thoughts. So it's a great oil to use right before you go to bed because in that dream state, you can start to heal that Heal your root chakra in that way, in that process. Okay. Um, so the next oil I want to talk about is vetiver. And then I'm going to move to a couple, a few wood oils. Okay. So vetiver, which is one of my favorites, and I never use this except at night. Or if I know I'm going to be in the house all day, just kind of lazing around. Because it's a very thick resin um, oil. And it puts you kind of like in a state of extreme drowsiness and lethargy. lethargy. So you want to be careful with vetiver. Um, it is, it is called the oil of centering and descent. I just love that. Right. Um, vetiver, vetiver oil assists in becoming more rooted in life. Life can scatter one's energy and cause one to feel split between different priorities, people and activities. So vetiver brings the individual back down to earth. You know how you have racing thoughts um, and, and feelings of anxiety and things like that. Um, really just pent up emotions that are so built up that you can't even sleep or think straight. Vetiver will clear all of that out. It will cause you to sleep or just get very lethargic to the point where you ain't worried about nothing. And so it starts to heal that type of energy. Um it, it centers your emotions and, and keeps you grounded and connected to reality. Um, so it's, it's a good, that's a really good oil to use. I've used it before instead of taking some, um, you know, like the doctor will prescribe you certain things, certain pills and things to make your thoughts stop racing or not have anxiety, especially after having children, um, you know, experiencing that feeling of, um, slight depression after having children. I used my vetiver and I was fine. So I, I would suggest definitely, um, looking into that oil. Um, and it, it also addresses the need to escape. Because when we feel like we have to escape something, that means we're not facing it head on and dealing with it. So if you feel in a moment of crisis where you feel like you need to escape or 
suicidal thoughts or just thoughts that bring you way down, rub a little vetiver on, put one drop in eight ounces of water. All the oils I'm suggesting to you are ingestible. My oils are anyway. Um, you can put one drop in eight ounces to four ounces, four ounces to eight ounces of water. It's not going to hurt you. These are certified pure therapeutic grade oils. Okay. So, um, that's vetiver. And then I'm going to move to my wood oils because I love wood oils. The first one is cedar wood. The second one is sandalwood and then white fur. All of these oils assist with opening your awareness, um, to your, to the fact that you have a support system. And the reason why it's very important to understand that is because right now we are, you know, going through this pandemic and we're kind of like alone or quarantined. And so we, we start getting these feelings of I'm alone. I don't, you know, I can't bond with people. I don't have support, a support system. Um, you even start feeling kind of disconnected from your family and your friends. And I would say definitely cedar wood. All the wood oils help you connect and become grounded, especially when it comes down to community because trees, the roots connect all over the earth, just like in the movie Avatar, trees connect and they, um, they keep you rooted and grounded and help you to feel as though you do belong and that you are needed, wanted, and loved. Okay. So just remember, you know, cedar wood is one of those oils. It's called the oil of community, of course, right? <laughs> so um, it helps people who struggle with, um, it says those in need of cedar wood struggle to form bonds within social groups. So like I said, you know, it, it's, it's something to help you connect to the human family. Um, so I really love cedar wood for that. And then sandalwood is interesting. Um, it's the oil of sacred devotion. You can use it and it will assist you um, with all kinds of prayer, meditation, and spiritual worship. Um, it assists us with quieting our minds so we can hear the voice of the spirit, hear the voice of God, or, you know, connect to your higher self. So in sandalwood, of course, frankincense and myrrh, those were some of the oils that they um, get that the three wise um, men or magi presented to Christ. Um, so, you know, definitely look into the sandalwood oil. Sandalwood, if it's not a little expensive, then it's not authentic. Really just don't waste your money on sandalwood. That does not cost you a little bit more than the average oil out here, okay? Um, you want something that's pure, something that's certified grade, um, essential therapeutic oil. Okay. Um, and then white fur, that's probably one of my favorite wood oils. Um, the oil of generational healing, which is, you know, healing that generational karma that we carry around within us, whether it be how we were brought up or, um, ancestors who are not so benevolent, you know what I'm saying? Who just kind of a little selfish, just want their way <laughs> so they can use your energy to, you know, to complete their life cycle, right? So white fur addresses generational issues. Patterns and traditions are passed down from family member to family member. Some of these patterns are positive while others are negative and destructive. Examples of negative patterns may include addictions, abuse, alcoholism, anger, codependency, eating disorders, pride, and the need to be right. Right now, that's exactly what's going on <laughs> in our social media platforms. Everybody got to be right in what they say. Nobody, you know, and sometimes you just ain't right. Sometimes you just believe what you believe and that's okay. It don't make you right. So, uh, um, white fur is a great oil, um, for assisting, all of us with um, generational healing. And just a sidebar, when my, son, when my sons made beard oil, we used white fur as one of the base oils, essential oils, because it was going to be marketed to men. And because we have, we, um, before our divine masculine awakened, um, we had a lot of narcissistic men out here in society. Um, who are very quite abusive in their thought patterns and how they, 
deal with people, especially women. So we put the white fur as a base oil. So it could assist in those issues of the need needing to be right all the time, right? Um, white fur assists the individual in unearthing these negative patterns from the hidden recesses of the body and the soul. As they are brought to the light of consciousness, they can be dealt with and put to rest. Because we need the divine masculine and the divine feminine to be balanced, right? We work together. No one is beneath anyone. We are side by side working together in a balance. Um, the individual can choose not to participate in destructive family patterns and thereby break the tradition. Breaking the tradition of karmic cycles is so important right now. It's time to move forward and let go of whatever negativity your parents, like for instance, my mom and her cousins for a long time had a lot of you know negative energy about them to the point where my mom would not even take us to visit our cousins um, and vice versa. That Those cousins wouldn't reach out to us either with their children. So, you know, as a result... You have to get to know your cousins all over again. And, you know, so in my generation, we decided, my cousins and I decided we weren't going to carry on that energy, that we were going to teach our children to break that pattern and, you know, just live in love and light, let go, you know, of that. My daughter just went through the same thing with, um, you know, her dad's side of the family where um, she, her and her cousins got together and formed a pact that they would not carry on the traditions of whatever energy their parents have against each other, that they're going to make sure that they stay connected. And I just think that's wonderful. This generation is just so great, right? And I love our 20-somethings on down because they are bringing so much light and love and, and um, clarity and guidance to us. And we really need to listen to them sometime, even though they get a little out of control. We still need to listen to them because <laughs> they bring us some good energy through. So, um, you know, those are the, all the oils. I'm going to definitely post them in the description box below. And I hope that you all enjoyed this short presentation. I wanted to make it shorter, but sometimes I just got something to say. So, um, just remember your affirmations for the root chakra. I am safe. I am secure. I am grounded. I am rooted. I am trustful. I am strong. I am connected. I am stable. I am light. I am love. Love yourself today. And when you love yourself, you love others. Clear those root chakras so that you can get to the next chakra and start to just blossom. Face your fears. You know what I'm saying? Bring about some sexual harmony in your life, whether you're intimate or not. <laughs> um, and just remember to be love, uh, be happy, be light, be love. And like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this. Anything that did not resonate with you, let it dissipate. All right? Namaste. Give thanks for watching.